Welcome back. All right, so some news of the day for all you fine people today. There were a couple of news items that were related to games from last night. I opted to save them for a news video because generally when I'm doing reviews, previews, I leave all that stuff for a news video. Uh, Spencer Knight has signed a three-year extension with the Florida Panthers. Me some expensive goaltending in Florida for a few years here. It's a $13.5 million deal. Uh, $4.5 million per season. So... The combination of Knight and Bobrovsky are going to be expensive. We'll see how Florida navigates that. Florida, of course, a team that used to have to take on contracts to reach the cap floor. Now they spend some money. Uh, obviously, it's affected the on-ice product. They are a much better team. And uh, going into next year, they'll have to figure out how they're going to keep everything under the cap. Stay competitive. And I would expect the rumors of Bobrovsky's contract being on the trade block to only pick up from there, right? Uh, Knight is going to be the starter at some point. Uh, that $4.5 million cap hit tells me the team has faith that he can be their starter soon. You know, I, at least to me, $4.5 million is a little pricey for a backup. Put it that way. So we'll see what Florida does. Uh, as mentioned in the, the video I did this morning, uh, Seattle, Melanson is due to have a hearing today for a check to the head on James Hamblin of the Oilers. So that hearing will come down. I would think it'll be a suspension. I'm not sure how this is all going to work because in all likelihood, Melanson's not making the team this year. Anyways, uh, fifth year draft pick in 2021 and all. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll see what happens. But if you're a Seattle fan, the good news is the mascot is almost here. Uh, they had kind of a hype video for the mascot showing kids, uh, you know, starting a mascot search. And then at the end of that video... Uh, it shows 10 one which means October 1st of 2022. We will see the mascot for the Seattle Kraken. And and I think we would have seen the mascot last year, but there was a lot of other stuff going on last year. So it's delayed for a year, but we'll get it this year. And the bar is raised when it comes to mascots, right? Because gritty. But anyways, uh, it, it may be one of those mascots that's not, I'm not going to say forgettable, but not as as out there is gritty in in like chance in vegas right chances is the mascot although it feels like the knight is more of the guy who does the mascot stuff in the building if you've been in vegas you know what i'm talking about uh where he's the one kind of hyping up the crowd and everything but anyways uh yeah seattle their mascot should be revealed uh is it going to be davy jones is it going to be just a, a guy walking around with like just tentacles coming out of their head i don't i don't know anyways um Tampa Bay has moved their training camp, so Hurricane Ian coming in. And last I saw, it it was projected to make a direct hit on Tampa, which would be the first time that the city of Tampa's had a hit that direct in a very long time. So um, no idea what this could do to Tampa going forward into their games, potentially early into the season, because this storm could be very destructive. But they moved their training camp to Nashville ahead of the hurricane coming in. So hopefully it's not as bad as it looks like it could be. But uh, Tampa's not uh, going to have their training camp there, at least for now. Uh, Tavares is day-to-day -day with an upper body injury for Toronto. So we'll see how that, proje how that projects going forward. Day-to-day -day injuries are always interesting to me during the preseason because a day-to-day -day could become week-to-week. -week, so we'll see. Not that that doesn't happen during the season as well, but... Feels like during the preseason they want that optimism still. Nope, nope. He should be good for opening night. And then, ah. But anyways, <clears throat> we'll see how long Tavares is out, right? Uh, if you're Toronto, you don't want to lose Tavares for any period of time. Uh, the Toronto Six of the Women's League. Uh, Sammy, Sammy Jo Small has been named president of the team. And she has quite the resume to be able to do so. Uh, two Olympic gold medals, five world championships. And she was a co-founder as well of the CWHL. And so while we still have this two sides when it comes to women's hockey, where you have the the, the Premier League and then you have the Women's Union, uh, Sammy Jo Small has dived into the Women's League now. And it's a pretty good uh, overall brain trust they've got at the top of that organization. So we'll see how things go this year for them. Uh, so this is one of those things I wanted to talk about today too. Patrick King uh, was asked about how he feels that uh, in a recent athletic uh, article where they were ranking players and they had a 1A, one, one 1B, one 1C, one 2A, 2B and all this, that Patrick Kane ends up being a 3B player, right? So he ends up looking like he's the 34th best player in the NHL. So I went to the article where they've got him ranked 34th and why. 
and their statement is basically along the lines of uh, he is he's really good offensively, but there are some defensive issues. And this is something that I know I've dealt with on this channel when I've tried to do rankings, that points aren't everything, but there are definitely fans. And I think there's players who just look and say, you know what, I got 100 points last year. I, I believe that I'm ranked here. And the confidence is great from the player, but I also understand the argument when it comes to a two-way player versus a one-way player. And the argument is usually along the lines of, okay, so he provides that offense, but he hurts you defensively, right? Whereas the two-way player may not provide as many points, but he might prevent the points at your end of the ice. So that's where that two-way player versus one-way player argument really gets going, right? And then in Kane's case as well, at this stage in his career, at his age, you do expect some drop-off which I don't with Kane. I'm not expecting that drop-off necessarily with Kane or with Ovechkin, but I understand the model. I understand why they had players where they did in their rankings. But that's part of the reason why in, in this offseason, in the last three offseasons, I have not rated defensemen, centers, wingers, goaltenders, because it just turns into this whole argument of, well, this player had more points than that player. So by default, that means they're the better player. And I disagree with that. I don't think that having more points, even, even with forwards, means that they're a better forward. I think there are forwards who don't get very many points, who are excellent at their job and very good players and solid two-way players. And in some cases, just really, really elite defensively, right? So that's where the ranking system can, get, can really bother people, whether it's a fan base, whether it's players and maybe coaches. I've seen coaches and GMs get asked about like advanced stats and stuff and rail against it and say, well, no, we don't. You know, we don't think that that's indicative of, of how well the player played. And then you get into all the other stats, too, with that. So I do understand Patrick Kane disagreeing that he's the 34th best player in the league. Honestly, I saw that number and thought, he's he's better than that. But I, I do understand the argument <clears throat> that The Athletic was making uh, in the article regarding that. So uh, it, it is always interesting to see. And, of course, they're, they're predicting where everybody's going to be in the standings. I also saw today... Uh, one prediction on where teams are going to be three years from now and which teams are set to do what in the next three years. And and it all gets into the speculation on where they are with the salary cap, where their prospects are, but it can all change very quickly. And that's why I don't do those projections either. Um, I've had the questions of, do you think this team can win a cup in the next five years? My answer is always, well, yeah, because five years, almost anything can happen. You look at where the Avalanche were in 2022 as Stanley Cup champs and you look back five years it's really quite the different tale. So yeah, it, it is interesting when I see all these rankings come out. I go through them. I eat it up. I love it. I know that ranking videos do very well on the channel as well. But it, it usually ends up with a lot of the, the, the blowback that I don't like. The one thing that gets me too is that people would look at these rankings and go, well, clearly they hate that player. Because I know I've had that too. Where, well, if you like that player more than this player, that means you hate the player that ranked lower. Which is not the case. Not at all. It's just not a thing. But, again, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you believe in, in just looking straight at the points and saying, this guy who has 60 points is better than that guy with 50 points? Or are you of the belief, too, that, hey, you know, the two-way player of that 50-point player, if it's better than the play of that 60-point player, maybe he's just a one-way guy and doesn't come back very much, I'd rather have the 50-point player. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, Andrew Mangiapane sounds excited to play with Nazem Kadri and should be. Honestly, this could be a really good pairing. I don't expect Kadri to score points at the same rate in Calgary that he did in Colorado last year. He had a career year, uh, and, and really it was a fantastic run for him. But at the same time, I do think 65 points, completely possible. 70 points, completely possible. And putting him with Mangiapane, if Mangiapane can keep that 30-goal form he showed last year, that's going to be a very good second line for Calgary. And, uh, and some sandpaper there too. So uh, for the Flames, it's going to be interesting to see how that lineup shakes out for them. Uh, Nico Heischer uh, may play from here in the preseason. He got pulled out of the game last night against Montreal. It's an undisclosed injury. They're testing him today. Uh, I would think abundance of caution. Heischer's a player who we know has had injury problems before. So they may take that abundance of caution approach with him and, and just take their time. But he may come back and play in another preseason game but it's not guaranteed that he does. Uh, Cal Peterson was pulled out of the game last night for LA as well. Uh, lower body injury for him, although they're, they're listing it as undisclosed. He'll be reevaluated today. 
and they'll figure out what they're going to do. One thing with LA, I do wonder if Peterson got hurt, who then ends up being the backup for them. That could be an interesting plot line with them. And then how many games does that give quick until Peterson's back if it ends up being more of a long-term thing? And with goaltenders, it is so hard to tell. Uh, we've seen goaltenders skate off under their own power and thought, well, they should be okay. And then you find out it's it's a 10 and they're out for months. So hopefully Peterson's good. Peterson's a guy who needs a bounce back season. And so hopefully it's nothing major. Uh, Josh Anderson, who's been listed as day-to-day -day for Montreal, is not skating. So it's an upper body injury. But the fact that he's not skating yet makes you wonder uh, whether or not he might be out for longer. But the, the key date for all these players and most of these teams is going to be October 11th. That's when the season officially gets started. It's only four teams, in, although, let me back up. It officially starts with the two games in Prague. But the North American side officially gets going November 11th when you got four teams playing that night. Uh, of course, just the two teams going over to Prague. San Jose and Nashville. And yeah, so I think really with the injuries, it's teams trying to say, you know what? Make sure they're ready and good to go for the home opener, for the season opener, and, and get her done that way. So I, I do expect players to be held out of the lineup for injuries they play through in the, in the regular season. Similar to players getting held out of games in the regular season that they wouldn't be held out of the lineup for in the postseason where you know you're you're like you know what if if you can skate if you can play we're putting you out on the ice so there you go let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happen upon this video thank you guys so much for watching for all your support i will talk to you again soon